it's proving to be a very interesting year. We got the Olympus OM1, we got the Panasonic GH6, and we were rumored to get the Canon R7 in March. But March has come and gone and nothing. In fact, we've heard nothing of Canon so far this year. But this video isn't about Canon, it's about Fujifilm. You see, unlike Canon, everybody else is getting ready to release stuff. And Fujifilm, at their Fujifilm X Summit, coming up at May the 31st, are looking to release a whole bunch of new lenses and cameras. And yes, the Fujifilm X-H2 is due to be released. But it's coming in two separate models, and I'll get to those shortly. But first, let's cover off what else we're supposed to get, and then we'll get to a very interesting camera that's coming in two variants. We're getting the XF 18 to 120 f4, and we're getting the XF 150 to 600 millimeter. I should pause for dramatic effect there. I love this focal range. I think it's terrific. You can get it for almost any camera, but Canon's lineup of RF bodies, there's no 150 to 600. And I know Sigma makes that, but Sigma isn't currently making lenses for the RF mount. But enough of Canon, let's get back to Fujifilm because this video is all about Fujifilm, at least until I get behind the scenes and I get some interesting talk there. We're getting the GF 20 to 35 millimeter. And here's a big deal. We're getting a new X-Trans sensor and it's going to be a BSI stacked sensor. It looks like everybody's getting on the bandwagon of a BSI stack sensor. And that's really, really exciting because we get better noise. We get better low light performance with less noise is what I was trying to say. And of course we get to be able to push a whole lot more data. So that allows us to do other things as well. We can increase dynamic range, whether this will happen or not remains to be seen. But what we've seen with Sony, with Canon and Nikon, the benefits are there with a BSI stack sensor. Being able to push so much more data gives camera manufacturers a lot of room to do better things, things that we look for in cameras. All right, now let's get to the big news. The part that you probably skipped all that other stuff I talked about to get to these brand new two X-H2 variant cameras. And I'll get to them in just a short moment. But if you skip the other sections, go back. I dropped a bomb. You want to pick up on that. It's really good stuff. And now for the details, we have two variants, the Fujifilm X-H2 and the Fujifilm x H2S. One will have a 26 megapixel sensor, the other a 40 megapixel sensor. I know what you're thinking. 40 megapixels, huh? That's right in line to be able to do 8K. And it is, but it's only going to be able to do 8K UHD. And I know the rumors, Fuji rumors says it'll be DCI and UHD, but here's the problem. Using the standard aspect ratio of these sensors, you need at least 39 megapixels in order to 8K UHD. And to be able to do 8K DCI, you need 44 and change. And let's take a look at the cameras that make up this club because there's only a few of them right now in the stills hybrid market. The first to market with 8K UHD and DCI was the Canon EOS R5. And of course, it has a 45 megapixel sensor. Next to market was the Sony Alpha 1. It has a 50 megapixel sensor, can do 8K or actually 8.6K oversampled 8K UHD and DCI. And then of course, Announced in October the 28th of 2021 and shipping December the 23rd, the Nikon Z9 capable of doing 8K up to 60 frames per second, or actually with the latest firmware update, firmware 2.0, can do 8.3K oversampled 8K. But again, it has a 45 megapixel sensor. To be able to do 8K video on a stills hybrid camera using an APS-C or full frame mirrorless sensor with its aspect ratio, you need a minimum of 39 megapixels to do 8K, UHD, and 45 to do DCI. The rumors have got something wrong here. Either they've come out with a brand new sensor that's customized to 16x9 or 1610, basically a super 35 sized sensor, or they got it wrong of the sensor size. It's going to be 45 megapixels instead of 40, or they didn't get it wrong at all. But here's where I'm a little unsure of what it says on Fuji rumors, they talk about one of these cameras being able to do 8K, obviously the 40 megapixel camera. And then they talk about the price being under $2,500. But is that price under $2,500 the 26 megapixel sensor or the camera with a 40 megapixel sensor? And if this was the 40 megapixel censored camera, this is where I'd be really excited. The Fujifilm X H2S with a 40 megapixel sensor and priced under $2,500, most likely $24.99.99. Well, 
that would make it the cheapest by far 8K camera out there for the stills hybrid market. It would be by a long shot. The Canon EOS R5 is the cheapest at $38.99. Then we have the Nikon Z9 at $54.99. And then the Sony Alpha 1 at $64.99. That's a very small club. To be able to do 8K UHD video for under $2,500 would be an awfully big deal. And I looked, I looked over fujirumors.com, I scanned the internet, and I couldn't get that clarification to get concise information saying, yes, the Fujifilm camera to be able to do 8K UHD is that camera that's going to be under $2,500. And I really kind of doubt it. But again, it's really hard to say. This is a very strange market that we're living in, where everything is in short supply from car parts to appliance parts to home electronics, camera gear, everything is in short supply. And I've even seen certain things in grocery stores that are in short supply as well. So it's really hard to say, but I know this is going to be exciting and we don't have to wait that much longer. The Fujifilm X Summit is May the 31st, 2022. And that's when we'll know for sure which of these cameras we priced at $2,500 and will it be the 8K one? We'll just have to wait and see but I'm really excited about this. But now let's go a little bit behind the scenes. I wanna to talk to you about something that's been kind of on my mind a little bit lately. I've been thinking about buying a Corvette C8, one of those mid-engine sports cars. Hold off before you make judgments yet. I used to own, when I was 37, I bought myself a brand new 2008 C6 Corvette and I really loved it. It was a very enjoyable car, but a few years later, my back really got bad and I just knew that I couldn't drive any car for any length of time without it causing me excruciating pain. Things are better. I've been going to rehab. I've got somebody who knows how to treat me and I'm back to a relatively normal life. And I'm looking back to that Corvette. I'm older now, but still I, I look at the Corvette. It's got beautiful lines. It's just a gorgeous car. And when you drive it normally, it drives like a normal car. It's not like a car that's like a hyped up squirrel that's bouncing from one place to another that's always running at full speed. It's a rather respectable car when you're driving normally. And the fuel economy, I was quite surprised at how good it was, especially at full chap running down the freeway going from one place to another. However, take it on the track and, well, it can certainly eat gallons and gallons of fuel. Or if you're in Europe, don't worry, it's not going to eat gallons and gallons of fuel. It's going to eat liters and liters of fuel. But I'm kind of interested in this car and I'm, I've, I've started doing um, online, you can build and spec the car out. And I looked at the LT2 package because I, I still need heated seats for my back. But I also like having that heads up display. Having all that information on the screen when you're driving without having to look down is huge. Not just for when you're on the track doing 260, but when you're driving normally in traffic, you can see your speed, you can see all sorts of indicators and including your nav gets popped up on the display as well, and I really, really like that. Sadly, it costs a far sight more than what the previous C6 that I bought. I think I paid $80,000 after taxes for that model, and this one here with those same capabilities is now looking at about 92 plus tax. So that 80 was with tax, so I'm probably looking at about 104, dollars $105,000. That's crazy, isn't it? I know what you're thinking. Well, Simon, just go out and buy the Z9, the Alpha One, the best 50 millimeter lens, the best 24 to 105 for both of those. And don't stop there. Go ahead and get the a7 IV. Go ahead and get the R3. You know what? Get the R1 and you'll still spend less. And that's true. But you got to understand that when I bought this Corvette, I also bought that Canon 50D and they were inseparable. Quite often the camera would look at me and say, look, I want to go take a look at some mountains. Let's take some pictures of some mountains. And the Corvette would say, yeah, I know the perfect place. Um, Mount Washington in New Hampshire is only about six hours away. And um, if you don't want to go that far, we can maybe stop off at Whiteface Mountain in New York. That's only about five hours away and stay the night. And then if you want to go do another mountain. Other days I thought it'd be really nice to go to the ocean. So yeah, the camera would say, yeah, well, let's go to the ocean. The Corvette would say, no problem. I can map that out to you. And I remember I did this beautiful trip. I actually went through New Hampshire uh, right where Mount Washington was, stayed the night there. And then the very next day I went out to Maine, beautiful driving roads there. Uh, you're, you're not doing anything over about 80K, 90K at most, but the bends, the twists, the turns, 
And that's why I like the Corvette, because the Corvette is a car that understands that not all roads are straight, that they have turns and lots of them. And it's just an incredible car. I really enjoyed that. And it got me out, got me outside a whole lot more. Because even though you're driving, to me, the whole point of driving wasn't to race, wasn't to get into competitions with people. It wasn't about going to the track. It was about getting to a destination, a destination to enjoy, and then to take photographs to capture. And you see, back then, technology was very different. Today, I can just imagine racing up Mount Washington, going through three gears. And yes, the last time I went to Mount Washington, I went through three gears getting up there. And if you know Mount Washington, you got to be careful with that mountain. The New Hampshire motto, I think, is live free or die. And I got to tell you, there's a 2,000 foot drop several times off the road. There's no guardrails. So what I did is I wanted to play it safe. I got there first in the morning. I was the first in the line. And I went through three gears. And it was a lot of fun driving up this. And every now and then they have competition where they do rally races at Mount Washington. But to be able to capture the beauty of Mount Washington, just driving up it, and then to be on top, capturing an 8K raw, 8K all I, or 8K over sampled 4K, I think you're starting to understand what the magic of that car was and how it propelled me to go places that, well, I haven't been since. And wow, how exciting would that be to take my son? My wife is working all the time to take my son for a one day trip, a day tripper, as it say, to go there, spend the day there, maybe stay at a hotel and then drive back, capture incredible footage. That takes me back. It also takes me back to the first time my dad took me there when I was, well, 13 or 14 years of age. Wow. That takes me back. You see, I've lived in this part of North America for a good 30 plus years, 40 years. And some places like Mount Washington, I've been there as a kid, as an adult. And now to take my son back to those same destinations and to use a camera to capture them in all their glory, that's the magic of it. But maybe I'm crazy. What do you think? Is this a silly thing to do? Am I pushing things too much? Are there better things to spend money on? Let me know in the comment section down below. As far as the money thing goes, one thing I plan on doing is I'm going to take some funds from this channel. And I built up a technology fund from doing web design and other activities, including this channel. So not all the money in there is from this channel. And I can use money from that to so it doesn't take away from family activities. I want to make sure that I've got an education saved up for my son. I want to make sure this family's taken care of. So I'm careful. I don't squander money. But I had a bet with my wife. She wanted to move, and I didn't want to move. I didn't want to spend more on a house. And I said to her, I said, I'll tell you what. If we buy that house, I get a Corvette, right? She says, yes. So I've got that in my back pocket. But tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, is the first time I'm actually going to a dealership to take a look. To Kick the tires, so to speak. And the one I'm looking at, if you want to go build and spec it online, it's the LT2 Coupe. No convertible, because you know what? You can take that middle piece off and then stack it in the back. And you know what? It's just as good, but you've got a hard top roof because I don't know about you. I don't like the idea of driving in a convertible. If you ever flip it for whatever reason, it might not be your fault. Maybe you get side, you get T-boned and you go on your roof. The last thing you want is your head stopping the car. But yeah, that's what I'm kind of looking at. And colors? I'm looking at their red or a white. I think both of those, or even a gray, and maybe with racing stripes down the middle. But let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I rambled a bit too much now. How much time have I been recording for? Oh dear, 27 minutes. This is going to be one of those long videos. But you know what? It's the weekend. It's rainy. We've got winds of something like 90 kilometers an hour, which is what, you know, freeway speed in the US, interstate speeds. Uh, it's pretty windy out there. Uh, this is coming from Manitoba, and those guys just got hit. But they also got snow, too, whereas we're just, well, we're just getting rain. What's the temperature going down to tonight? 34 degrees, which is 2, so we might get snow as well. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to know the latest information on the new Fuji lenses as well as the X-H2, whether it be the regular one or the S, go ahead and subscribe and hit all notifications, so that way, as soon as news comes out, I'll have a video out, and you'll be in the know. You won't miss any crucial tidbits. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.